ask a person to stand up and with their legs straight touch their toes, and most people can't do that. Everybody's hamstrings are long enough to allow them to do that. The reason they can't do it is their central nervous system will not release them to do it. It doesn't feel safe for them to do it. If you take a person under a general anesthesia, you can put them into almost any position possible. Laid them on the operating room table, you could lift their leg up to here. When they're awake, you couldn't get it past here. When they wake up from surgery, will they have a torn hamstring? Not at all. They won't even know their leg was moved. The difference is when they're under general anesthesia, their brain is not sending a signal to the leg that says don't lift. The reason for this is because your central nervous system detects neural tension. Your nerves are, quote unquote, more important than muscles. So if there's too much tension building up in the nerves, your body will tighten up the muscles to protect them. A lot of people mistake neural tension for tight hamstring. And most of the time they try to stretch their hamstring, which is one of the worst things you can do to an inflamed nerve. There's a simple little crude way to check this at home. Go ahead and stretch your hamstrings, try to touch your toes, lift your leg up on a table, and then just lift your head up into extension, looking at the ceiling. And if that relieves the tension you're feeling in the back of your leg, that's not hamstring tension, that's neural tension. Muscular tension usually responds well to stretching, myofascial release, dry needling. Neural tension doesn't. It needs a neurodynamic approach, whether it's mobilization, gliding, or offloading, depending on what's going on. So knowing which one you're dealing with can make all the difference in actually fixing it.